So we were talking the other day, and somehow Garbage Pail Kids came up. Well, I, I was, it was on my mind. I got a text message from our friend Jack Packard. He said, hey, I know you don't care about video games, but, and he sent me a link, there's a Garbage Pail Kids video game. It's done in like, the, like an old 8-bit side-scroller. And we were also sent a Garbage Pail Kid, a framed Garbage Pail Kid thing. With all yeah. the cards of all of our names. Cards which are with our names. Real garbage pill kits. And then, yeah, one of them. I don't know. If, I don't think this is the one that was on there. Is it the J Decay? I just happen to have this shirt. It might be the one that's on there. It might that. be the one that's on there, yeah. But then someone also made an art piece of all of us as garbage pill Their pill own kids. original, yeah, yeah yes, uh, garbage pill kids. Um, uh, garbage pill kids are never far from our minds. They, they just, and, and they're have, with us our whole lives. It's, they, they, what is the tagline for the movie? Out uh. of the garbage pail and into your heart. That's the way it's been. <laughs> I was like, what does it say on the Blu-ray? It says a live action heap of fun. That's the other tagline, yeah. I thought it said a bunch of cheap fun. And I'm like... Oh, that's, that's kind of true, except for the fun true. part. <laughs> except for the fun part. The cheap part, definitely. And we're here today to talk about Garbage Pail Kids the movie. Yes, folks, we've literally reached the bottom of the garbage pail. We don't call them garbage pails in the United States. We call them garbage cans. Mm -hmm. It's like a British thing. But it has to sound like Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah. Garbage GPK. Pail Kids. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They did their best. They did their best. Well, not with this, <laughs> but with the cards <laughs> they did. Hit it, Johnny! <laughs> Well, we mentioned the other day to our friend Rich Evans that we were going to be doing a Garbage Pail Kids review, and he said, about time, or what took so long, or something, because this is one of those movies that's just always kind of looming. It's always around. This, is, this to me, uh, I, and I guess the review format's just off the rails here because we, we're now, you know, we're now getting into territory of movies that I despise. But it's not a best of the worst movie. No. it's not funny. It's not and it's fun. it's not fun to watch. No, no, no. But it's but fun to talk about. I, I, will, I, will, I will give an exception for this movie. While I think it's trash and I hate it. Yes. It is one of those movies that I watched dozens of times as a kid. And I had that very same uh, VHS tape. Yeah, we have the original VHS here. And it's an important movie because it ca I came out in 87. Yeah. So I was, I was the target audience. I was trying to think about what the target audience is. It's... Little boys. <laughs> 10 to 15 year old boys. And I was right in that age range, more towards the lower end of the age range. I was like eight or nine or whatever. Yeah. When it came out, but probably about 10 when it was on VHS. And I'm like, I am the target audience because I collected all the Garbage Pail Kids. I had a pile of them this high. I loved them. Mm -hmm. I would buy them at the 7 Eleven. I had so many Garbage Pail Kids, loved them. I even co collected all the cards with the special backs, the puzzle piece backs. Oh, or it makes like one big. To, to make the live mic, yeah. uh, the guy with the electric guitar. And mm. I still have it. I still have it. I, I assembled it with scotch tape, <laughs> which is like yellowed and cracked, and that, barely holding it together, put it in a frame. I've had it since I was like fucking 10 years old, <laughs> and I saved it, and it's still held together with the same goddamn tape from 1980, whatever. Um, so I was a Garbage Pail Kids fan through and through. The core target audience. I didn't see this movie in the theaters. I don't even know if it played in the theaters or if it was straight to video. It played some theaters. I'm trying to remember. I may have seen it in the theater. Hmm. There's a sliver of a chance. I, I, it was one of those movies where I, I, I watched it and I was like, I should like this. I should love this. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong. And I don't know what it is. It's very, very similar to the Masters of the Universe movie produced by Canon. Yes. Where it's like, they made a He-Man movie? And wa watched it, and I'm like... Oh, no. That's when my, like, brain started to change, you know? When yeah. I'm like, something's not right. Why is it so cheap? Why is there, like a, like, a furry dwarf in it? Why is there, a, like, a pink Cadillac that flies through, like, like, a space portal? We did a whole commentary track for it. Yeah, we did. And it's just like, what's, something's wrong. This is, like, cheap or bad. And, and, and I didn't understand. You're, you're too young to really, like, pinpoint or articulate. Mm -hmm. You just know something's off. Because in that, in that particular, there was a big era of time when 
the, the be all and end all, the final top of the pyramid for, for culture was the movie. Yeah. Like whatever kind of like pop culture, like if they made the movie. Barney's Great Adventure, the movie. Transformers, the movie. Jetsons, the movie. Superman, the movie. The Garbage Pail Kids movie. That's the trend that this falls into, as well as He-Man, yeah. which is the movie that comes out just a little too late. Yeah, okay. They're trying to cash in on a fad, and Garbage Pail Kids, He-Man, Barney, they were all Way too fads late. that were like, okay, we know we have a sliver of time that we can, we can uh, ride this out, so we got to rush a movie into production before it falls apart and nobody cares anymore. That's like the Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Uh, the Fidget Spinner movie. <laughs> Did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> it could have, but I wouldn't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I there agree. was never a Pog movie. The, the Jerky Boys, the yes, movie. Like, yes, Like you could have comic books, you could have... You know, novel adaptations, soundtracks, you know, any kind of media. But once it hits the movie, mm -hmm. then it's like the end of the road. It's like, you know, sink or swim. Yeah. When you, once you get to that point. And so my little brain was like, the movie, it's got to be the best thing ever. I fell, Phil. Daddy. Not in this lifetime, little person. Something's wrong with it. Yeah, that and era too specifically was everything was the movie. Mm -hmm. Transformers, the movie. Here they kind of, they fucked it up right from the beginning because they call it, weirdly, they don't call it Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. They call it the Garbage Pail Kids movie, which just sounds more awkward. So right out of the gate, they're failing. Mm. I think fail is the, the main topic of this discussion because it is one... Failure after another. It's a fascinating failure. It's rare when you see, I mean, we've seen plenty of bad movies, obviously, but to see one that gets every possible aspect of filmmaking, storytelling, special effects, everything completely wrong. Wanna suck face? Where do we begin, Jay? Well, it starts with the cards. Yeah. Uh, as we said, they were super popular for a brief little window in the 80s. That was the era of like kids entertainment was gross because it was like Garbage Pail Kids, early Nickelodeon. You had like uh, you can't do that on television, which was all about vomit and children being lined up to be executed. Uh, <laughs> you never watched You Can't Do That on Television? No. No. Remember, Jay, I didn't have cable till I was 31. Oh, OK. okay. I had broadcast television. I was I, 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 I didn't grow up wealthy like you. I'm sorry. You actually lived in the Home Alone Mansion. I did, in, I did. In Illinois. Yeah. In the north north suburbs of Chicago. Mm -hmm. you, that's a little secret you haven't really told anyone, even Macaulay Culkin. I, well, you know. I don't know why you didn't tell him. <laughs> but a little secret, Jay, lived, <laughs> Jay grew up in the, the Home Alone Mansion. It's true, it's true. And uh, he had cable. We had cable, we, I, anything I wanted. I want all the Garbage Pail Kids. So I'd get the entire stack of every series of Garbage Pail Kids cards. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Appropriately enough, and this is true, one day I, was, I had the flu and I was laying in my bed and all my Garbage Pail Kids were laying on the ground next to my bed and I turned over and I vomited all over them <laughs> and they had to be thrown away, which seems appropriate. It seems wholly <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> Watching rubbish. You better come out and stop me. And the appeal of the Garbage Pail Kids were the cards, the artwork. Mm -hmm. they, they were very, they were painted, uh, started by a group of kind of like counterculture underground comic book artists. Successful uh, in its own An way. answer to the Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah, they were there's even be... a Cabbage Patch Kid in the movie being hanged inside of a cage in the background. Is a that little, true? A little note in the state home for the ugly. No, in their basement. In the basement. Oh, the basement of, where uh, they are held captive for the whole film. Of the magician's basement. Yeah. Really? I noticed it because I this is my first time watching this on Blu-ray, and I also noticed they put up a lot of two-dimensional backdrops. Yeah, we'll get into all that. Uh, but anyways, continue. Um, so yeah, John Pound, Art Spiegelman, all these art guys making these things that originally Topps Chewing Gum wanted to make actual Cabbage Patch Kids cards, but the company that made pa Cabbage Patch Kids wanted too much money, so they said, fuck you, we'll make parodies of them, and then that became popular in its own right. 
I wonder if there's ever a lawsuit. There was, there was. That's why after a certain series, they had to change the look of the Garbage Pail Kids. They had to change the logo slightly. Yeah, Because the I early ones, that. they just look like Cabbage Patch Kids. Yes, they have the same, <laughs> same kind of logo. Yeah, yeah, but they're all cards of kids being maimed or ripping their skin off or vomiting. And Any they, kind of punny uh, uh, alliterative name, yeah. you know. The most famous one is the perfect example of what a Garbage Pail Kid is, which is Adam Bomb. Mm -hmm. It's a little kid pushing a button and his head's exploding, but he's smiling while it's happening. He's happy about it. Right, right, right. Yes, they're filthy little children, um, <laughs> like snots, boogers, farts, vomiting. Everything kids love. And then, you know, and then it just got, they, I think later on they just got weirder and weirder. And yeah. just whatever they could think of, they would paint. Well, the later series after the Cabbage Patch Kids lawsuit, when they had to change them up, they made them more where they're like obviously not real people, where they're more like plastic. So you see yes. like cracks in their head it's, it's, and stuff like have that. have a shine to them. Yeah, and I think that was one, an attempt to make them not look as much like garbage, like Cabbage Patch Kids, but also to uh, lessen the impact of them being violently ripped apart and- Yeah, disgusting, horrible <laughs> heads things. exploding. Happen. I'm sure a bunch of like uh, suburban moms with picket signs caused a stir at some point. Oh yeah, that was a big deal. History is just repeating itself it, it, over and over again yeah, yeah. throughout time. <laughs> I could just, I'm predicting the future in the past. It's amazing, I have a gift. <laughs> um, I, I, I was just like blinders to all this. I'm just like, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's the history of Garbage Pail Kids cards for those Zoomers out there. Right after the popularity of them ended, they tried to make a movie. And they made it as cheaply and quickly as possible. It's like a canon film. It, it, it's weird. It feels a lot like a canon movie. And uh, the effects artist was John Carl Beekler, who did like all the Empire Full Moon movies, like Ghoulies and Demonic Toys. So it kind of feels like one of those cheapo yeah. like Ghoulies-type movies as well. There's even a Ghoulie, speaking of that, that uh, basement. That's just full of Easter eggs, I guess, because there's at the top of the stairs, there's a painting. Yes. And that's of John Carl Beekler, the effects guy. And that was a prop from the movie Troll. But also in that painting is a ghoulie. Okay. So it's a prop from Troll that references ghoulie. I was going to ask you about that painting because it is always in the it's shots. It's really prominent. And it's, I guess, John Carl Beekler who did the effects, was also the set designer. I don't know. <laughs> they just worked this prop into the movie. Uh, well... I watched a little bit of the behind the scenes on the Blu-ray, and I don't remember who was talking. I got I got what I needed to after about 30 seconds. It's like, the guy seemed like, he's like, mm, we're, we're told to make a Garbage Pail Kids movie. <laughs> and uh, he said his idea was to make it like darker. My take on the Garbage Pail Kids would have been uh, sort of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle route where someone poured radioactive sludge into the garbage can and they emerged as these awful, horrible, mutated little monsters. Oh, that was John Carl Beekler talking though. Okay. That's and, the effects guy. And then um, they, they get mutated and it, it's more like a darker kind of horror movie. And then the studio was like, well, we want to make this for kids. Mm -hmm. And he's like, how do you make this for kids? All these cards are like fucking awful and disgusting. <laughs> and I was like, well, well what that guy's saying makes sense. Because I always think like in, in, in hindsight, what do you do? Like the Masters of the Universe movie, I totally get. You don't have a ton of money. You're not going to recreate Eternia and have a, a Castle Grayskull and flying spaceships and yeah. all these uh, elaborate costumes and battles and you're gonna cheap it out. You send them to Earth. Send them to Los Angeles at two in the morning to run down. <laughs> where all the streets are empty. Where it's a, it costs you 50 bucks to block off a street and uh, <laughs> that, that's your movie. I yeah. get that. Mm -hmm. With this, you don't have to go big. You just have to go smart. You and, just have to have a plot that seems to somehow tie in with these goofy little creatures. <sighs> but the plot is about fashion design? Which I guess you could, if you squint, you could maybe see a connection between the contrast between these gross little, ugly little outside of society monsters and high class fashion. But when your fashion show that the movie leads up to is done with like party city streamers and it looks horrible, that contrast doesn't work. Your, your, your runway is six feet long. <laughs> 
<laughs> 25 light bulbs. And it was shot in the same dirty warehouse as the rest of the movie. Yeah. Uh, I'll give that one a high school gymnasium. Tangerine was an up and coming designer. That's true. That's and this true. was a fashion show put on by a department store. Yeah. So it, it wasn't Milan and Gucci. But it wasn't even a department store. Well, they, they rented out the local high school gym <laughs> to put on a fashion show. Okay. They did. They did uh, I, I joked about it being in a warehouse. They did shoot the whole movie in a warehouse, which is why everything that's outside is clearly, everything is in an alleyway because it's in the alley behind the warehouse that they shot the interiors at. So they built the little uh, exterior sets. In, oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. That's why Tangerine lives six feet away from the Mancini, uh, the antique store, antique yeah. store, yeah. And why in between them is just a series of multicolored doors that are s stacked one right next to the each other, where you couldn't open them and go anywhere. It's just a bunch of doors. No, they say there's like a for rent sign on one of them. Yeah, like well, it's supposed to be like apartments. Cans. Yeah, it's but the doors are so close to each you other. You clutter it up with stuff and signs, and yeah. no one notices. And then you have a big 2D backdrop. Out and uh, rent, rent a backdrop, yeah. But the plot is uh, we open with our hero, uh, Dodger, uh, played by uh, Austin McKenzie. McKenzie Aston. Oh, God. Brother McK of Sean Aston. Yes, McKenzie Aston. Samwise Gamgee. Yes, he, he's running around being chased by a bunch of 30 year olds. <laughs> he's 13 years old. And he's being chased he's by. He's 14 going on 15. I'm 14. I'm almost 15. Oh, in that case, he's older than the actor because the actor says uh, he was 13 when they made the movie. I looked up the ages of M Mackenzie Austin. Mackenzie Aston. Mackenzie Aston. And his love interests. And his love interest, Tangerine, um, they're only a year apart. That was the weirdest thing because growing up and watching this movie, especially like in my early 20s, kind of rediscovering it as like a terrible movie, the, the creepiest part was always that because she hangs around, Tangerine, all of her uh, bully friends are like 30 years old. And so I always associated her as being older. Sure. So the relationship between her and Dodger always felt super creepy. But in reality, she was only like 15 or 16 when they made the movie, which makes the movie even creepier with how much they sexualize her throughout it. Especially the basic instinct shot yeah yeah which, uh, i'm sure I don't you've know, too hot for youtube yeah i don't know but if yeah, there's so a much mistake of, or what yeah but it, watching the movie uh, growing up i was always like this is really she's creepy. like you feel like she's like 20 or yeah. something yeah because her friends look older i mean it was good casting if you want to like that dynamic of the, the the kid who's just a little too young for the girl he's going after mm -hmm. She compliments him, which, which is how I inferred her age in the movie as being 16-ish. You know, that jacket makes you look uh, older. I'm much older. At least 16. Maybe 17. They're at least, all, at least 16 because they're driving. Sure. So we could rule that in. Well, she seems older because she has her own apartment. No, 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 I think it's her bedroom inside her family's apartment. We oh, just don't see the we rest We just never it. see anything because they have no more Because when he comes in through the window, yeah. she closes the bedroom door. And so I'm, I'm, I was inferring that that's her bedroom. But there's like a kitchenette in there. There's, it looks like a little studio apartment. <laughs> that's what makes it even weirder that they're constantly bullying him. Wish I could help you, baby. But the little creep's gotta be taught a lesson. It's a matter of principle. Because they look like they're 25 years old. He looks like he's 13. And the movie just starts with them, like, beating the shit out of yeah. him and stealing his milk money. Like Juice is endlessly greedy. He's, sure. He just loves cash. Yeah. That, I mean, that's his villain's motivation. It, it, it goes no deeper than that. It's part of the theme of the movie, of, of people being ugly. Not just on the outside. But yes, yes. Uh, uh, Mancini says it best in his little monologue when he says, greed, greed, ugliness. Ugliness is cruelty, meanness of spirit, greed. And they have the little, little dolly shot. I'm glad they did a wink, wink after that. He's like, do you think they bought it? Yeah. To be blessed with unusual features is an adventure. Yeah. 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 Do you think they bought it? Which, is, which was nice because I was like, oh, God. Because <laughs> you can't make the garbage pail kids lovable. 
And the movie at least doesn't try to do that, I don't think. That's its whole goal. <laughs> it doesn't succeed, right. but that's its goal. I guess. That was the studio's goal. They should be villains. If they're kids, if it's a kid's movie, we have to have a moral lesson. <laughs> When you're a kid watching this, you're like, oh, magical movie. Mm -hmm. It's a magical movie made in Hollywood. Now I just picture some guy like smoking <laughs> at his like his typewriter and he's just like, oh, garbage pail kids. I don't know, space, uh, exterior space. They come from space. We'll never mention it again. We don't again. know where do these things come from? Why are they so weird? Mm -hmm. what, uh, like, are they deformed people? I don't fucking know. What am I doing? <laughs> I can barely pay the rent in my studio apartment in Los Angeles. Uh, we'll open with a garbage can flying through space. And then we'll never address it and again. And we'll never address it. They just came from space. I don't know, fucking know. Somehow they ended up in this tiny antique store and then, that's and, smaller yeah. than our Plinkett house set. It doesn't say, uh, doesn't say the year, like, you know, that they're flying through space. We just assume sometime in the past. Sure. And they ended up in... And I guess it's just coincidental that their spaceship looks like a human garbage can? Have you ever heard of Pandora's box? Think of this as Pandora's pain. We won't even get it. No one cares. <laughs> that we have to show their origin. Sure. And, and trying to explain their origin is too complicated. I like the guy's idea of toxic waste. Bunch of cabbages fell off a truck and rolled down into a sewer. And then toxic waste, because that was the thing in the 80s. It's all toxic waste. The um, suckling, remember that? Yeah, the, the, I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, the toxic waste got on the cabbages and then turned them into little freaks. <laughs> like, they, great, great. And then just have, the, have, have it be like critters, you know? They come out yeah. of the sewers and they attack a small town. Mm -hmm. And each one does some kind of disgusting. Can you imagine Messy Tessie? Like, like trying to kill somebody with snots, <laughs> like drowning some like lady with snots. And she's like a no. She'd have to restrain them. She uses her snot as like a rope. Oh, almost, sure, and sure. Ties them to a chair. Yeah, or like like. And then Valerie vomit vomits on them, and it's like acid vomit. Yeah. It turns them into a skeleton. Messy Tessie like like the, the, leaves a trail of snots all down the hallway and down the hardwood stairs. Someone slips and falls down it. <laughs> Instead, she doesn't do anything with her snot. None of them do anything with any any of their no. their special abilities. There, there is like just it's just like a, it'd be like a smorgasbord of of, of weird <laughs> fucking nightmarish things you could do with garbage pail kids yeah. as as villains. But uh, the cards were of course collected and liked by kids, so you got to make it a kids movie. So you can't go that extreme. Now you could. Nowadays you could. Maybe. You, could, mean, do, you could do an ironic reboot of Garbage Pail Kids with dark humor. I've actually thought about this. The perfect director for a modern Garbage Pail Kids movie is the guy who directed the movie The Greasy Strangler. My God! This man is truly mad! Because that's a movie that is very gross and off-putting but it's executed in a really like stylized way that makes it almost surreal and not just disgusting and uncomfortable to watch, yeah. which this movie unintentionally is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, that would, that would, that would be a big hit with 40-year-old man babies. Exactly. Like us. Like us. I would watch the shit out of that. Because little kids currently don't give a shit about Gar, even we'll, though they did bring him back. We'll start writing the script. Okay. Gre a greasy Strangler, <laughs> well, if you're out there, we want to work with you on a Garbage Pail Kids feature film. I need this dog to have some grease on it. So when I eat it, the grease will lubricate my throat. So you have Dodger and he's in love with Tangerine, who is a monster. Although he doesn't see that, he's blinded by her physical beauty. He, yes. He doesn't see the ugliness inside of her. Yeah. And that's the theme of the movie. There's some themes going on here. He comes back at the end, he says, I don't, when he falls out of love with her, he says, I don't think you're pretty anymore. Maybe we can just be friends. Maybe we can just do fun things together. I don't think you're pretty anymore. <laughs> but, uh, so her, bo her boyfriend is Juice, who is, who is just perpetually evil. Yeah. He has no redeeming qualities whatsoever, and he has his little, he has two gang member friends. Mm -hmm. He's a very complex villain. He loves cash that's jammed into a cigar box <laughs> from uh, Tangerine's illegal fashion, uh, uh, underground fashion market. 
she drives up in, a, in a, a course into an alley because the whole movie takes place in alleys. Yes. The alley behind a, a club and just sells her fashion designs out of her out of her car. Yeah, she makes her she makes her own original embarrassing eighties clothing in her bedroom and or apartment a part, her studio apartment maybe in uh because she's either 16 or 27 and and girls are just clamoring for for the tangerine wear mm -hmm. they don't have stores in this city they and she literally sells the she's shirt. Just, her fashion's so good she sells the shirt right off her back yes and um and that gives dodger his first wee boner as he, he sees her, uh, an underage girl and an underage girl to the cameraman yeah yeah and the director I, I i i think now that i'm thinking back i always assume that that girl was older because she's so sexualized yes she's very and then she does a thing she's like cross my heart she does the cross my heart and then later she has the key and she sticks it right yeah. by her boob and, the, and then the infamous basic instinct shot that happens where you see everything up her skirt you see her wendy winston <laughs> I think it would be her messy tussie. <laughs> after after Juice is done with her. <laughs> His name is Juice. How do they call him Juice? Uh, oh, we're going to hell. Uh, hey, we didn't make the movie. All I, all I know, and that's was the shocking thing, was to find out that Captain Manzini is played by Anthony Newley, who wrote... All the music for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Actor, musician. Mm -hmm. I mean, his his. Uh, I was like, oh, what? And I looked at his all of his biography. He married. He was one of Joan Collins' many husbands. Oh. I mean, like, he's more interesting than the movie. <laughs> but that's a that's another story for another day. And this okay. he plays man who loves to wash fourteen year old boy several times. Yes, yes. We got to get you in the bath. But first of all, we've got to get you cleaned up. Here, try this up. A dress? Why, why do you keep cleaning him? Stop cleaning this boy. He I like parents. it when all the little monsters watch you. Dry up with this towel now. Can, can you ask get out the, of the tub. <laughs> creatures from space to leave? <laughs> but... It's weird. It's weird. I did notice in that first scene where he, where he makes Dodger undress, he gives him an African dashiki. And he uses his magic to make the washing machine start. Which is broth and vampire's brew. Make these clothes as good as new. I was like, oh, he has actual magic? He does, yeah. But then it's never used again for the rest of the movie. He tries to use magic at the end to cast a spell to make the garbage pail kids go back in the garbage pail, but he fails. But he fails, because he, 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 his magic only works on washing machines, I guess. Yeah. But I noticed in that scene, again, going back to the fact that the whole movie was shot in a warehouse... It's the first time I've ever noticed this. When he's talking with Dodger on all the wide shots, you can hear a cricket like our studio. Wow. Why can't we ever use that garbage pill? How long have you worked for me, boy? The last few videos that we've done, you can hear a cricket. And in, that, in the movie, you can hear this cricket, and then it'll cut to a close-up, and then the cricket's gone. Oh. And then it comes back to the wide, and he's back. That cricket's back. They couldn't get him out of their warehouse. Hot damn. <laughs> Would you look at that? Yeah. And they couldn't ADR it. They just, uh, fuck it. They couldn't get Anthony Newley back for ADR. No. The minute, the minute they called cut on his last take, he was already in his car. He was on the Concord <laughs> jet back to London. <laughs> <laughs> So they picked a handful of Garbage Pail Kids. Most of them are real, except for Foul Phil. I think he was real, wasn't he? I thought Foul Phil was kind of like, they wanted Adam Bomb, because he's the most famous Garbage Pail Kid of all, but they couldn't do. How do you maintain an exploding a, head for the whole movie? So they just have kind of a big baby. I like a lot of John Carl Beekler's work, and like, but he's good with like little puppets. But when it came time to do a big animatronic head, it doesn't quite work. You can tell those little people in those costumes can't see where the fuck they're going. And the eyes on the costumes are just dead. So they're just like... Yeah, oh yeah. Everybody looks uncomfortable. Yeah, and I And the feel, animatronics are so terrible. Well, I mean, the, there was great articulation in the alligator's mouth. <gasps> My God, it's Cousin Charlie. <laughs> I, I was impressed with that, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love the scenes when they're throwing things around. Like, he comes down with food. Mm -hmm. uh, Austin, Austin McKenzie. McKenzie Aston. Mc Aust is Austin. Just call him Dodger. Is Austin McKenzie a person? Probably. I'll have to look this up. Dodger comes down with a bunch of food. 
because he has them working in his private sweatshop. Yes. Making clothes for a girl he's in love with. Yeah, I guess we should point that out. That's the plot of the movie is he discovers that the Garbage Pail Kids are really good at fashion design. So he uses them to get in the good graces of Tangerine. Which makes total sense. Sure. That the Garbage Pail Kids would be very good at sewing stylish 80s clothing. Yeah. That's the plot of the film. Yeah. But he comes down with lunch and he's giving them lunch. He brings like uh, cereal and bags of chips and stuff and they all start distributing it and they're like, hey, go. And they throw it and they're just. No one can catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see anything. <laughs> There's multiple times, and this is watching it in HD, I noticed it more, where you can see like the edge of the mask comes out from under the, the shirts. Alligator holds his hand up, and you can see the end of his rubber glove. <laughs> There's one shot, I think it's when they're hiding, they're trying to, for no reason, they're trying to hide the fact that they have a TV. They're trying to hide that from Dodger. Mm. They're like standing in front of it. And I think like the mechanics went wrong in Valerie Vomit's face. <laughs> like her whole right half of her face is just fucked up. <laughs> like one eye is just sticking straight up and there's like a weird smirk and it's just frozen that way. I'm assuming there is a script. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the whole movie feels like it was pieced together with B-roll. I don't, do, you, do you get that feeling like they're yeah, just like filming stuff? None, and then... of the, none of the shots are nice. Like they don't look like a shot in a movie. Right. It looks like behind the scenes footage from a movie. Yeah. And I looked up because I was curious about that because so many of the shots uh, look like they just blasted a light on the actors. Yeah. There's a couple shots where there's a little bit of like, I don't know, shape to the shadows. And I'm assuming that's accidental. They just happened to move the camera somewhere where it looked okay. But most of the shots are just so flat and ugly. And uh, I looked up the cinematographer, and then it all made perfect sense. The movie he did right before this was Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. Garbage Day. Garbage Day? Huh? No! I think in terms of, like, the progression of, like, a scene, the scenes are just, like, they, they just sort of, I mean, I guess there is, like, a bit of story progression. But like I was saying with the B-roll, it's like, the, the, the camera will be like filming things and then they'll be like, and, and the, the characters are so inarticulate yeah. that they just, you, all these just 80 yard lines are just thrown in everywhere. Whether a mouth is moving or not. We tried, now let's eat. Exactly. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, oh, let's have them say something here. And all those lines like came back to me, like, <laughs> like, like repressed trauma. <laughs> Drink the red and you'll get dead. Yeah. Like, I, I remember all those lines. I used to say them. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> My tummy hurts. My tummy hurts. What did you eat? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Gotta do it. Like that exchange. <laughs> Ellie, you ate my burger. Oh, yeah? Prove it. I can't. You ate the evidence. But the, once, once they're free, they go out looking in garbage cans. For yes. their friends, because I guess presumably all the, all the other Garbage Pail kids that appear on all the other trading cards uh, also live in garbage cans. They yeah. all came from space at some point, and they live in random garbage cans. They can't find them. Mm -hmm. um, then, then out of nowhere, they say that their friends are at the state home for the ugly. We think they might be locked up somewhere. In the state home for the ugly. The state home for the ugly. I can't believe people would make a place like that. They're probably at the state home for the they ugly, just, which don't... is not a, an establishment that's been established earlier in the movie. No. This is like an hour into the film. There's no lead up to this. There's no like scene where they discover this information. They, they just, just say, say it. Yeah. And then it's a thing. Mm -hmm. And their friends are not at the state home for the ugly. Well, this confused me as a kid. I thought what they did, because we see the state home for the ugly is basically like they drive around. They're like dog catchers. And they catch people in nets and take them to the state home for the ugly. If they're ugly enough or too fat or too skinny, it's, like Gandhi. Uh, um, yeah, it's, 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 it goes into like a weird cartoonish Looney Tunes kind of logic when the, the plot line with Tangerine and her fashion show and the abusive boyfriend is like borderline realistic. Yeah, and the whole movie is shot so like flat. It looks like a documentary or and, something. And they don't gel. So it doesn't, I was thinking Looney about that stuff. and rewatching it. Like the State Home for the Ugly, if that was in like 
Pee-wee's Big Adventure, like something that has a little style and kind of whimsy to it, right. you'd, you'd buy it. Yeah. But in this, it's like, what the fuck is this place? It doesn't mix. Um, but yeah, so they, they say that their friends are at the state home for the ugly. And then when the garbage pail kids get captured and they're there, we see the security guards. They're like, what are we going to do with them? They'll be gone soon. Gone where? <laughs> like, oh, they're going to murder them. Yeah. So then when they're rescuing the Garbage Pail Kids later in the movie, Captain Manzini and their, their biker friends yep. that we, we haven't talked about yet, yeah. um, uh, Dodger says, what about the other Garbage Pail Kids? And Captain Manzini says, we were too late. Remember the garbage truck? We were too late. Just go and check that everybody's out safe. Okay. So the movie's just flat out stating that all these other magical Garbage Pail Kids are, have been murdered, I guess? <laughs> And that's their, 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 that's what they came up with as a solution to not have more garbage pail kids in the movie because they could only afford these few costumes. That's that's my thought is that they had this set and it's a nice set in comparison. It's the other end of the warehouse they shot it's in. It's not uh, the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> but it's a nice set. And they had these cages and they're like, we got to fill the cages up. Mm -hmm. Can we make 12 more full bodied garbage pail kid costumes? Hell no. No. Um, put a clown in one, but too, too silly, too hairy, too fat, too thin, too... Um, and they're not even ugly. It, I mean, it no. should be the state home for the odd. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, abnormal. Ab state home for the abnormal has whatever, kind of a ring yeah, to it. Ugly, I don't know. And um, they have one too crippled, and it's like, <laughs> it's like a guy who just looks like a janitor, and he's just sitting on a chair. <laughs> I don't like know. A, that was like a production assistant. Yeah, they're just, just like, the put anyone in the cage as we can and whip yeah. up some signs because we're, we don't have the budget to make more garbage pail kids. Mancini <laughs> uh, should have said, oh, they, they must have been rescued. Yeah. And, uh, soon to appear in the potential sequel if this movie's a hit. Yeah, a weird, morbid thing to introduce. A weird uh, way to solve a problem of explaining where the other garbage pail kids are. Yes. Oh, they're fucking dead. Yes. And, uh, anyway, moving on. But the, the bikers help rescue them because a biker gang in an 80s movie is, is because like Because the filmmakers saw Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Guaranteed. We let him go. No! They meet the bikers in the bar when Alligator goes into the world's most dangerous bar. The world's toughest bar. The world's toughest bar and wants to eat. A lot of eat. sign jokes in the movie. He wants to eat toes. Yeah. I guess a biker bar, I don't know, it's not really the best place to find toes, but he happens to find a biker who has open-toed shoes on, and then uh, he gets into a little trouble, mm -hmm. a la Pee-wee's big adventure, and they, of course, you gotta have the shot where they slide him across the bar, gotta and that, uh, yeah. they all threaten him, and uh, Greaser Greg drives his little ATV through no, the window. No, Wendy Winston does. Oh, I thought it was Greaser Greg and him. No. Greaser Greg would have been appropriate. Wendy Winston does because then when Wendy Winston beats up people at the bar and farts, farts in the bartender's face so strongly that it blows his mustache off. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Listen, Jay. I'm just explaining what happens in the film. I, I just saw this today and I misremembered <laughs> the whole scene. It would make sense if Greaser Greg was in. And I then know, he could bond with him. Because I wanted to po point out this incident because... <laughs> Grace, uh, Wendy Winston apparently drives the ATV through the glass window, and it and it's funny because oh, it's a, it's a dummy on. Obviously, they're not going to put a little person on there. Yeah, it's a dummy, and it comes breaks through the glass and just and immediately. They just cut it because you can see that it just immediately just fell, <laughs> and then they cut to it miraculously on the floor, and he's like, "Ah, hey, Wendy Winston!" And he starts jumping around like karate chopping people, farting, <laughs> and it turns into a big bloodbath of violence, and then for no reason at all, the bartender goes, hey! Hold it! Hold it! Little sucker's got guts! It's not quite the same. It's, the filmmakers saw Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and they said, let's just do that. Sure, but so but they, they had to corners. ally themselves with bikers for no, well, not for no reason, but for the reason that they would help them rescue them at the end. Guys, I need your help right now. The little guys are in trouble! Come on, come on, come on. So that they could crash the uh, Tangerine's fraudulent fashion show. And sexually assault a whole bunch of innocent women. And, and yes, sexually assault. Although Greaser Greg sexually assaults uh, <laughs> Messy Tessie in a safe. Yeah. Stop! Cut that out! 
but I haven't finished the examination. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that. No. A couple years ago, all the Me Too stuff was going on. I didn't hear anyone say a word about Greaser Greg. <laughs> Very disappointed. Cancel Greaser Greg. <laughs> Cancel Greaser Greg. Um, so that's in a kid's movie. Sure. And then, of course, we have the completely, completely out of place, We Can Do Anything by Working With Each Other song. This, this song. It's a good song. It's not bad. It comes out of nowhere. Why should we do something nice? Let's quit now. That's my advice. We can do anything by working with each other. And they're singing it while they're stealing. Yeah. They're stealing all their equipment to, to make these, uh, to make all these fashions from. Yeah. From another another sign gag. We have the toughest Nine. bar in the world. This is non-union sweatshop. Right. And then there's also the sign gags in the sewer. Yeah. One says like primetime TV. There, there's there's like visual jokes, mm -hmm. but it, they don't they don't stick with it, and it, it's not thematic, and it doesn't it doesn't hold up with the other plot with the kid and the girl. Yeah. So they just don't gel. No, nothing nothing works together. No. It would have been funny if in the the sewer one of the pipes said like this movie. No. It'd be like the end of Freddy Got Fingered when they said when is this fucking movie gonna end? <laughs> well, self uh, <laughs> self referential thing. <laughs> What about that, uh, that that really great scene when they go to the movies? Oh yeah, where you're watching it and you're like, I would rather be watching Three Stooges. Oh god, those extras. The the one extra, she because they want to do the gag where Foul Phil steals her hot dog. So for no reason, she's holding her hot dog like back behind her head, like she's listening to a boombox or something. <laughs> the, the, the director's just yelling, "The midget can't see the hot dog." <laughs> What? Put it further behind your head. It's weird if I'm holding it back here. That bitch can't see. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on. That's the one thing I won't. Uh, everyone involved with this movie should be ashamed of themselves, except for the little people actors. They're just making some money. In a, in a warehouse with no air conditioning. One of them I was watching an interview with one of them talking about. They can only wear the helmets for like six, seven minutes, and they had to take them off and get like hoses with air conditioning in there. Sure. They were probably on the verge of passing out this whole movie. Yeah, you could tell they look miserable. The garbage pail kids. You, you think like, oh well, they're in a movie, you know? Yeah. They, they, they probably didn't get paid a lot. No, well, it, you also know because any movie made around this era that has little people in it, it's almost guaranteed that at least some of them were Ewoks. A lot of them went, uh, had, had done other stuff. Yeah, there's a famous one in this. Who, uh, he's in a ton of stuff. Yeah, well, Phil Fondacaro is Phil Greaser Fondacaro. Greg. Yeah, yeah. And he's a genuinely good actor. He's been in some good stuff. Mostly B-movies, because that's what you do with uh, a little person actor. But he was yeah. in Willow. And, but uh, Valerie Vomit is, uh, what's her name? Debbie Lee Carrington, who's the, the, the little woman with the gun in Total Recall. But that show is like when you're, you know, a little little person actor... You take what you can get. So sometimes we need a little person in this, yeah. you know, fifty million dollar movie. But then we also need them in Garbage Pail Kids. Like you go where you can get the work. Yeah. yeah. And then the next week you're on the set for Willow. Sure. But um, I mean, God bless them. They all they all suffered for their art. They made this great film that <laughs> will be enjoyed for generations to come. <laughs> to us, I always have that producer brain in the back of my head going yeah. like. Think about all the creative decisions. How yeah. did we get here? How did you get here? What? Who? Whose idea was that? The song? What? It's <laughs> it's a it's a it's a marketing conundrum. Mm -hmm. It's like they, they're nasty, mean spirited cards that are satire that appealed to kids because they had to hide them from their parents. Yeah. And then some studio wants to come out and make a big movie that's going to play in theaters that the parents will take the kids to. Mm -hmm. And it's just they it just that don't, don't, doesn't fly. Yeah. It it's, doesn't work for that, and you can't make them cute and happy. And, and they didn't really develop the, the, them as characters. I was thinking about like a modern day like Pixar movie, like, and how like tight those scripts are. Oh, sure. And how like well executed those stories are. Um, and I'm like, this is just like garbage. <laughs> no, no pun intended. No. It's just like, have all these characters and just have them like fart and say things and have no real motivations and how do they get around we want them to go to the movie theater and have a funny scene at the movie theater but how do they get there i don't know they find atvs behind a dumpster 
randomly. Right, right. Why it's are they just, there? It's bad in almost every way, but it's fascinating <laughs> because it, it brings us back to the initial question of what do you do? Yeah. Well, how do you make a Garbage Pell Kids movie? And I do think there would be a way, and, and, and it would be interesting with today's modern technology, not necessarily CGI, but um, you know, better costumes. I mean, you could do CGI, but um, better costumes. If you did CGI and made them really cutesy, like a Pixar movie, like cute looking characters that do like awful things. Yeah, it would have to be a horror movie uh, with a hard PG-13. Sure. Because uh, you'd have to get really mean-spirited and really gross, mm -hmm. uh, almost over the top. Yeah. And you'd have to pull out all the deep cut characters and just go hog wild <laughs> and have them all come to life Yeah. in small town USA. You do gremlins, but with garbage pail kids. Gremlins are critters with garbage pail kids, and, so, and there, there's something that happens that cuts the town off from the rest of the world, and the garbage pail kids are everywhere. Yeah, but a, a handful of little people in giant masks that they can't see out of bumping into walls in a basement? No. I don't know if you want to bring magic into this. Because magic's so lame. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lame 80s excuse to make things come to life. I don't well, know how lame it is. I mean, did you see Captain Manzini with that washing machine? I would, but what I was thinking was, you have a man-child, an incel, living in his mom's basement, and he's got, he's got a collection of garbage pail kids okay. in like pristine condition, mm. and something happens with that. Like yeah. it's struck by lightning, <laughs> or you know, whatever. No, toxic waste. Bring toxic waste back. Toxic waste. We need more toxic waste in movies. Bring it back. His uh, cards get covered in toxic wastes, and they grow out of them. Okay. Okay. And you have a gross scene where they're covered in goo as they're coming out of the, the binders. Maybe we're out in Nevada. We're out in Nevada. Okay. Mom is kicking Manchild out of the basement, and she takes all of his stuff mm -hmm. and takes it out and dumps it. And it ends up in the desert, and it falls into a hole and bounces down the hole all the way underground where they would bury barrels of toxic waste. Okay. Because that's what we do. Yeah. You take waste from nuclear reactors and you bury it in the desert because it's toxic forever. Mm -hmm. And that's where this, his binder of Garbage Pail Kids cards goes. Okay. And he says, Mom, I just sold that binder of Garbage Pail Kids cards on eBay <laughs> for $10,000. And maybe the buyer is some kind of rich guy from New York City mm. and he shows up at the town and he gets in because he wants his cards. Yeah. This guy had the perfect collection. Every card, mint condition. And this guy paid like a fucking hundred thousand dollars for it. Okay. And he shows up in his limo with all of his like like dude bro friends, and he's like this rich kid, he's an asshole, mm -hmm. and he wants his cards. And uh, they're the first victims of the garbage pail kids. Of course. Because he's like, Where are my garbage pail kids? And then the camera kind of pulls back. And there's thousands of them. And, like, <laughs> and then the man child goes, you, 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 you watch Garbage Pail Kids? So the angry incel kid, then he kind of sides with the Garbage Pail Kids. He becomes... They, it's like a wish fulfillment. He like becomes the hero. Get back... Oh, I was thinking he had like a younger brother or something that's like a good character. No. He gets corrupted and he uses the, the Garbage Pail Kids to get back at all the people that were mean to him. Because he's an angry incel. No, 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 no. He's he's our he's our lovable schlub. He's our okay. forty-year-old schlub. We'll get Seth Rogen, a <laughs> uh, forty-year-old schlub who lives in his mom's basement, who who doesn't want to work. He wants to. He just loves his eighties toys. Yeah. He's got He-Man. You know, maybe that's the end of the film. He throws He-Man toys down the hole, <laughs> and then and then. He man. He has to fight the garbage pail kids. He's chopping all these little kids' yeah, heads off. But he, he man's riding around on battle cat, <laughs> <laughs> decapitating them all. Oh, he gets the girl. There's like a waitress who works at the local diner uh, uh, named Tangerine. I was gonna say you have a little nod to the original. Her name's Tangerine. She wants to become a fashion designer in New York City. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And um, and he wants to get out of his mom's basement, but he's too lazy. And then he learns to during this whole adventure of all these gremlins. Uh, <laughs> Garbage Pail Kids that destroy the town. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you could have everyone be mean to them, like call them a loser, yeah. and like like, and those are the people that get um, killed by grump, uh, garbage pail kids. Sorry, but then he does have a, a growth. A he character. has a growth. He has an arc, and he 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 matures. He um, learns to put childish things away. Yes. By having He Man chop their fucking heads off. Um, so I'm all in on Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. Just call it Garbage Pail Kids. What? No, you, you talked about how it's called the Garbage Pail Kids movie. Oh, now yeah. But it in can a modern called. one, that nothing's the movie anymore. I guess the Angry Birds movie. Was that called the Angry Birds movie? I don't know. Because if so, then that's the Who connection. Who cares? But. Listen, <laughs> now we can call, finally call it Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. Okay. It's not a sequel. It's just called Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. And uh, we've attached Seth Rogen. He's into it. All right. Uh, you got the Bart, director of Greasy Strangler. Director of Greasy Strangler. We don't know his name. We'll bring Phil Fondacaro back because he's a legitimately good actor. I think he's kind of retired. He showed up in Land of the Dead as a little, a little uh, gangster named Chihuahua. He's like, hey, it's Phil Fondacaro. Yeah. But we'll get him out of retirement to do a little cameo. He's like the owner of the diner or something. Yeah, he'll have a non costumed yeah. character role yeah. yes and, and we'll give him a really good scene sure maybe he maybe maybe uh, our man child works for him in his only job and he, and he gives him this like big speech about how he's a little person is and his whole life he's struggled and it, it's been it, it's been really hard for him because he's a little person and he's faced uh, uh, obstacles yeah and here you are seth rogan you know able-bodied normal height person and you're, you're just an trying. asshole and yeah. you're not even trying and he's like I worked my way up to own this diner and now I'm doing good for myself and you you don't even leave your mom's basement and you you, you suck at the job as the janitor in the diner and Phil Fondacaro will get an Academy Award nomination for the Garbage Pail Kids movie yes we'll, we'll, we'll write the best <laughs> the best written tear-jerking scene where Phil Fonda Carlo talks about all of his struggles. Yeah. My parents told me, Malcolm, just not going to grow anymore. I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if all this was happening to me because I was magic? I'm into this, I'm into this project. It'll be the best Roku original that anyone's ever seen. <laughs> that, that no one's watched. No one will watch. <laughs> now it's going to pre pre premiere at Cannes and, and okay, okay. play in all the art house theaters. We should think big, ironically. Think big, yeah, yeah, yeah.